Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news of this evening, main suspect in cops a murder fatally shot in police confrontation in Manchester. Police say the main suspect in last week's murder of alleged gangster cop Constable Mario Thomas was fatally shot during an alleged confrontation in Bottop, Manchester on Monday. Police named the man as Kerry Douglas, 33, otherwise called the Little Dog or Stick Man. Head of the Manchester Police Deputy Superintendent Kerry Duncan said that during the early morning incident, a 9mm pistol with a magazine containing five live rounds was seized. Sometime after 3 a.m. today, there was a joint police operation in the Buttop district in the Alligator Pond police area. This operation was conducted in conjunction with members of the Specialized Operations Unit. During the operation, a warrant was executed at a premises, he said. Duncan said the police defended themselves. On their approach, they were greeted with a gunfire. The police took evasive action and returned the fire. When the shooting ended, one man was found suffering from gunshot wounds, he said. He is urging citizens to comply with the police. We are mandated by law to pursue criminal suspects. I just want to encourage the persons, particularly in Manchester, that we are committed to serving you and these operations will continue, he said. I just want to encourage the persons who may fall in the suspect category that when we come to apprehend you, do not resist because we see what the end result can be, and when these things happen, nobody wins, added Duncan. The police said that Douglas was the main suspect in Constable Thomas's murder in Comfort, Manchester last Tuesday. Mentally ill man in custody for alleged fatal beating of elderly man in St. Catherine. A man who is said to be mentally ill has been arrested in connection with the death of a senior citizen who was allegedly bludgeoned with a piece of board recently. The deceased has been identified as 86-year-old Vincent Lewing of Polyground District, Yuatan St. Catherine. It is reported that about 10.30 a.m. on June 20, Lewin was walking along the roadway in Polyground when he was attacked by the suspect who was armed with a piece of board. The suspect reportedly repeatedly hit Lewin all over his body, injuring him. Lewin was assisted to the Linstead Hospital, where he was treated and transferred to the Kingston Public Hospital. Lewin reportedly succumbed to his injuries about 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. Investigations led to the arrest of the 38-year-old suspect. Health Ministry suspends youth chat's service over concerns it's promoting deviant sexual behavior to children. The Minister of Health is suspending its youth expressions a youth chat a chat line amid concerns about the sexual and reproductive health advice being given to children through the service. In a media release on Monday, the minister said it has noted the concerns raised by members of the public and is assessing them as they related to the health and the family life policy of the government of Jamaica. It said the service would be suspended in the interim while the assessments are being conducted. A flyer circulated by the Love March movement claimed that the Ministry of Health was promoting deviant sexual behavior to children through the youth chat application. It said that the app endorsed the idea that a gender is a personal choice, not a biological reality, that it was advocating LGBT ideologies and directing children to seek advice from a local gay rights group. In its release today, the ministry outlined that Youth Expressions Youth Chats is a chatbot launched by the National Family Planning Board in collaboration with UNICEF and U Report Jamaica and has been operational since January 2024. It said further to the actions related to the public sector transformation program and the decisions related to the rationalization of public bodies, it will be integrating the NFPB as a division of the ministry. As part of the process of integration, the ministry said it will review all programs and activities of the NFPB to determine how they will be implemented as part of the central ministry. Coroner's inquest into Mandeville businessman Jason Neal's death adjourned to October 3. The coroner's inquest into the death of 33-year-old Mandeville businessman Jason Neal 
whose body was found with a gunshot wound to the head on the bathroom floor at his home on December 4, 2018, is to continue on October 3. Several family members, including Neil's widow, have testified before the seven-member jury at the inquest, which began in December 2023 in the Mandeville Coroner's Court in Manchester. Neil's widow, who was pregnant at the time of the incident, had testified that she was at home and heard an explosion. When she went to investigate, she saw Neil on the bathroom floor of their Ingleside residence in Mandeville. He was bleeding, and his licensed firearm was beside him, the widow said. Neil was taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. On June 6, Detective Sergeant Pat Wallace testified that on December 4, 2018, he received a call and went to the home of the deceased. He observed on the floor in the bathroom a Glock 19 pistol without its magazine. There was a larger pool of blood on the floor, as well as a magazine with the live rounds. He said he also saw a single 9mm spent shell casing on the floor. In giving further evidence, he said he observed the fixtures and the measurements in the bathroom. He said he saw a hole in a shower curtain and the damage to the wall beyond the shower curtain area, which was about four feet in height from the floor. A fragment of bullet was also observed on the floor in the bathtub, he said. Sergeant Wallace testified that he came to the belief that the hole in the curtain and the damage to the wall was by a gunshot. He said he also came to the conclusion that whoever discharged the firearm would either be sitting on the toilet or stooping beside it. He said that based on his observation at the scene and other information given to him, he commenced the investigations into a case of suspected suicide and enlisted the services of forensic scene of crime investigators to assist in the investigation. He said he later visited the Mandeville Regional Hospital, where he observed Neil's body, which had a circular burn mark to the right side of the head, which was an entrance wound. The exit wound was to the left of the head. He said he was not able to say if the deceased was left-handed or right-handed. The father of the deceased, Bonnie Neal, had testified that he was right-handed. King's counsel, K.D. Knight, is representing the deceased father. Neal's widow is being represented by attorney at law Christopher Honeywell. JUTC employee hospitalized with burns after fire at the Spanish Town Depot. An employee of the Jamaica Urban Transit Company was taken to hospital on Sunday night with a burns from a fire at the Spanish Town Depot in St. Catherine. One bus was destroyed and the two had minor damage from the heat of the fire. The cause of the blaze is being investigated. Acting Assistant Commissioner in charge of the Jamaica Fire Brigade's Area 3, Dennis Lyon, said that the JUTC unit was already engulfed in flames when firefighters from the Spanish Town Station arrived at the depot after they were alerted about 9.27 p.m. He said that the JUTC employee who sustained the burns had been taken to the hospital just before the brigade's arrival. Efforts to reach officials from the JUTC have been unsuccessful. At um, 9.27 p.m., the a call of bush and fire was received at the Spanish Town Fire Station. And one unit responded, but when they got there, they realized that it was one of the JUTC bus on fire. And they quickly got into operation and was able to extinguish the breeze. During that time, they realized that a member of the, I think he's a driver, sustained burnt with and was, and was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital just before the brigades arrived. Commuters stranded as the gale taxi operators protest the poor road conditions. Scores of commuters were stranded on Monday morning after taxi operators planned the gale St. Mary to Otria St. Anne route, which drew their services to press their demand that the gale main road be rehabilitated. Sections of the road are severely eroded, preventing easy passage for motorists. When the news visited the area, larger potholes filled with water were observed. The taxi operators, who have been complaining about the road for more than seven years, say patching and filling holes with marl have not been effective. One taxi operator said 
his earnings have been negatively affected by the frequent purchasing of parts for his vehicle. We are, we are endured long enough and we can't manage it no more. Every week we have to go mechanic or parts up. We can't do it no more a long time. We have play and it will fall upon deaf ears. We just can't manage no more boss. We operate at a loss right now. You know, cause it, it comes like a bad response we. We in the street, we have to make sure so we can fit and everything ready. Pick up on the road. But the government now ensures that the road fit for our car to go up on it. Thank you everyone for watching. See you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for another news update.